Let me start by introducing uh, Andrew McLaughlin. He is the entrepreneur in residence at Beta Works in New York. From 2009 to 2011, he was a member of President Obama's senior White House staff, serving as Deputy Chief Technology Officer of the United States, which is a great title. Uh, and he was off also on the Obama-Biden transition team. So, Andrew. Thank you very much. So, um, what I've been asked to speak about this morning is, uh, can the UN uh, save the internet? And it will not shock you if I just go ahead and reveal that the answer to that question is no. Um, what I want to do is go well beyond that, though, and try to put down a, a, a somewhat more provocative marker than, um, than we usually talk about, particularly for people that come from an administration background. And that marker is the following. I think that in the current debate about the governance of the Internet globally, uh, the United States is being entirely too cautious and too timid, and that we should set a significantly bolder and more audacious goal, uh, consistent with the United States' grand strategy and also with the economic interests of the world. And that uh, position is the following. It is time to set, as United States policy, the objective of dismantling the International Telecommunications Union. The current debate that goes on around the ITU in the world is essentially a debate between, uh, the ITU is harmless, uh, we should just uh, basically ignore it because it can't really do that much, uh, it doesn't actually have that much power, versus a position that the ITU uh, is an alarming threat to internet uh, freedom and uh, uh, the operation of free markets and free enterprise around the world, and so we should stop it in its tracks. Both of these positions, though, essentially leave the ITU as is. And what I'm going to make out today is a case for why we should say that as the PSTN blessedly uh, dies a slow and painful death to be replaced by the decentralized packet-switched internet that we've all come to know and love, it's time to replace the governance mechanisms that have gone along with that old, outdated, centralized, and uh, 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 no longer um, uh, uh, vital infrastructure that we're replacing. So. Um, the simple point, though, is our communications networks have fundamentally changed, so it's time to fundamentally change the governance mechanisms that catch up, including, and I would say especially, the ITU. So uh, I'm not saying kill the ITU exactly. I'm saying dismantle it. There are certain functions that the ITU performs that uh, ought to live on. There are small functions, uh, relatively insignificant in the grand scheme of things, and I think in some ways, indeed, um, part of a package of uh, policy problems that need to be solved. For example, um, uh, the ITUR sector, so I'm sorry we're already getting into acronym now, uh, land now, but anyway, I've only got 15 minutes, so I need to dive right in. Uh, so, for example, the ITU has traditionally uh, been engaged in the coordination of um, uh, satellite segments uh, and slots and radio frequencies across international borders, and it's probably useful that we continue to do international coordination around those things. But let's be clear, even in this area where, the, uh, where you could argue that some international coordination function ought to continue, uh, the historical track record of the ITU, its structures, its processes, have propped up incredibly damaging and false spectrum scarcity uh, claims and politics uh, that we're uh, working hard in this country as an administration uh, uh, in cooperation with the Congress to try to figure out how to get beyond. We're trying to figure out how to free up uh, spectrum to be used for uh, new models and new paradigms of wireless communications that, don't, uh, that aren't limited by this false notion of spectrum scarcity. So anyway, that's one example of what might uh, remain. Uh, the, the ITU maintains a table of country codes for uh, telephone dialing on the PSTN. Surely that function can continue, although I would note that even, the, even that, the ITU is historically screwed up if you look at the case of uh, Taiwan uh, and uh, its uh, uh, experience having a country code pulled and then later uh, uh, tolerated and then eventually assigned, but in a highly politicized way. Um, it's clear that the ITU is problematic even in those uh, configurations. But anyway, so my idea is um, uh, that I'm putting uh, in front of you is uh, dismantle the ITU, continue a few bits, spit out the th uh, spin out the things that don't need to uh, be anchored in a treaty-based organization, like, for example, the standardization activities of the ITU, um, 
and uh, perhaps combine its development sector with the uh, Internet Governance Forum to create some kind of a freestanding technical and policy advisory organization with sort of an annual conference for dialogue. Okay, so that's my prescription. Uh, what again is so bad about the ITU? Well, uh, I'm going to assume most of you are familiar with these arguments, so I won't dwell on them, but it's just simple things like the nature, structure, culture, values, processes of the ITU. They are all inimical, uh, inimical to a free and open internet, and they are all inconsistent with the nature of the technical infrastructure that now characterizes our communications networks. The ITU is centralized. It is centered around states and governments. Uh, parts of the ITU uh, adhere to the one country, one vote principle. So Andorra and Liechtenstein have the same vote as the United States uh, and China. Uh, many repressive governments use that uh, 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 feature of the ITU's decision-making process to engage in horse trading that has nothing to do with the technical merits of the decisions under consideration. The values of the ITU are anchored in essentially this state-centric, uh, government-centric uh, process, which is extremely excruciatingly bureaucratic. It is literally a bureaucracy made up of bureaucrats. Uh, it's a meta-bureaucracy. Um, with all of the uh, uh, downsides that go along with that. Uh, it is non-transparent. It is not open. Uh, a great example of misbehavior by the ITU is the MPLS forking. So this is multi-protocol label switching and the way that the ITU simply appropriated an I uh, Internet Engineering Task Force standard uh, uh, for no good reason other than to protect large incumbent monopolists and their uh, desires to engage in um, uh, non-network -neut non neutral uh, 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 business practices. Um, and so, you know, the past and future role of the ITU has traditionally been to foster corruption, monopoly, uh, to facilitate surveillance and censorship. Um, and these are not like sort of alarmist claims. This is the track record of the ITU over the last several uh, decades. It's um, a nexus for what I would consider to be soft corruption. And that's one of the worst forms of corruption, which is to say that unholy nexus of power wherein the regulator goes to work for the incumbent monopoly, the monopolist places its people into the regulator, they all get to take nice trips to Geneva on a regular basis, um, and people build their careers around the ITU as essentially a gravy train. And that form of soft corruption is one of the underpinnings that has kept the ITU alive and vital and is yet another reason why it should be killed off um, in its current form. So. Uh, 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 in one sense, you need look no further than the fact that the ITU is the chosen vehicle for regimes for whom the free and open internet is seen as an existential threat. Uh, Russia, China, Iran, Uzbekistan, Saudi Arabia, Vietnam, Belarus, Cuba, these are the countries placing their hopes and their ambitions uh, in the uh, vessel of the uh, International Telecommunications Union uh, as the vehicle for governance and regulation of the internet. So. Um, into the specifics, we're now in a, in, in a moment right now where the big annual conference on uh, the International Telecommunications Regulations, the ITRs, is coming up in Dubai. Um, there are many horror shows to be observed in the uh, details of the proposals for uh, new ITRs. Um, uh, among these are what I'll just reference as the Article 7 and 8 proposals by the UAE, by Russia, by China. These would validate, legitimize, uh, and authorize horrific national practices with regard to surveillance, censorship, privacy, anonymity, and identity. Uh, Russia, for example, um, uh, has proposed an article that would affirm everybody's unlimited right to use international telecommunications networks except when they're used to interfere in internal affairs, undermine sovereignty, national security, territorial integrity, public safety, or leak sensitive information, um, all of which they do anyway, but the ITU's uh, uh, mechanisms are being invoked here to try to validate, legitimize, uh, and instantiate these principles in international law even more so than they are already. Uh, under the guise of fighting cybercrime, uh, protecting national security, um, guarding somehow against cyber war, uh, protecting children, fighting fraud, and, uh, 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 protecting user identity and authentication on the internet, uh, these kinds of repressive regimes seeking to terminate uh, the um, potential of the internet to drive political change within their own borders are looking to the ITU for legitimacy um, and uh, it should be denied. By the way, this is a horror show in the ITR, pro the, some of the horror shows in the ITR process. Uh, the constitution of the ITU itself, though, um, already does a lot of this stuff. Uh, uh, 
there is an explicit right, for example, in the ITU's uh, constitution to block telecommunications that, quote, may appear, unquote, to be dangerous to state security, public order, or public decency. Um, these are all inconsistent with the kind of world we want to live in, with the kind of communications networks that um, uh, 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 we want to have. So let me say a couple words about some of the geopolitical consider excuse me, considerations around this. So first of all, is this um, anti-UN? And, uh, and, and I often hear this from, you know, sort of uh, 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 Brazilian, South African, Indian, Mexican, Indonesian um, uh, uh, colleagues who say, you know, the U.S. always bashes on the U.N., the U.S. hates the U.N., um, we need some kind of forum uh, in which countries can work together and cooperate, and so is fighting against the ITU a way to fight, uh, just another example of, 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 a, of a, a lazy, entitled American bashing on an international organization. Um, and I think we have to recast the geopolitics around this and understand that the ITU is the enemy not of the governments of those places. It is the enemy of the internet users and individual people that live in those countries. This is a fight between individuals empowered by the internet and the monopolists, the incumbents, and the governments uh, whose interests are opposed to them. And so uh, fighting against the ITU is fighting against those players, not fighting against people in those countries. Uh, so um, I hate to kind of um, say this in such a sort of stark way, but I will anyway. It strikes me that the Obama administration, coming from the left in the United States, where I come from, uh, has an opportunity uh, to kind of be the Nixon that goes to the China of really trying to kneecap a useless and inimical, uh, bloated, bureaucratic, corrupt international organization like the International Telecommunications Union. Uh, and I hope they will uh, take that challenge. One of the beauties about this issue at the moment is that it brings together left and right. For example, on the left, this argument uh, uh, is rooted in a belief in the importance of free speech, opposing monopolies. It is a pro-poor argument because, after all, competition and the introduction of competitive wireless uh, networks around the world and the explosion of wireless connectivity is going to be looked back on, I think, in 50 years as one of the greatest development programs and wealth creation vehicles ever. Um, uh, for the right, this is a way uh, to advance a belief in free enterprise and free trade, to fight against regulation, to fight against the centralization of power, against centralized planning. Um, it brings together U.S. and like-minded allies. Uh, countries that believe in free speech can come together around the evils of the ITU and the desirability of breaking it apart, neutering it, and replacing it with something better. Um, uh, it also brings together, by the way, in a business sense, uh, internet companies, access providers and carriers, public interest and advocacy organizations all have an interest in keeping the ITU from turning into some kind of a governance vehicle uh, for the internet. Um, you know, for example, uh, we've seen a really interesting reaction uh, to the European carriers uh, in this organization called Etno. I'm sorry, I'm just not going to spell that out. Um, um, trying to move from uh, subscriber pays to sender pays in order to try to capture revenues from the services that are going, you know, basically like double tax internet services on their networks. Um, this would be a huge threat to net neutrality, and yet even AT&T has opposed this set of uh, principles because it's not in its economic interests to pursue them uh, and to start shelling out money to uh, its peers and, uh, and, uh, and transit partners. Um, and finally, I'll just say, like, there's also a symbolic importance to winding down a centralized government-centric treaty organization in the context of a new communications network that doesn't need it, doesn't need it, and uh, in fact, if anything, is harmed by it. So uh, in my last minute or two here, if not the ITU, what? Well, in order to get your arms around that, um, you have to understand uh, 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 what the internet actually needs to function. In other words, if it doesn't need a centralized, governmentally driven organization to function, what it does need is a host of organizations tackling different pieces of the problem. And um, the best way that I can sort of summarize this is, is if you watch the cybersecurity debates that are taking place in Congress, what they typically get wrong is the idea that you need to have centralization of flows of information, centralization of decision making around cybersecurity, centralization of um, uh, of expertise. Um, and in fact, the way that the internet stays secure is by a vast multiplicity of constant ongoing conversations. Security on the internet is conversations. 
And governance of the internet globally is conversations. It's conversations about best practices, conversations about how to use the internet, conversations about what new services uh, entrepreneurs should be developing, what, uh, how businesses relate to each other. Um, those kinds of conversations are what make the internet hum. It's how the internet standards were built. It's how the internet network uh, has been coordinated for uh, decades now. And it is what, in, what should, as a model, replace this notion of the ITU. So um, let me say a couple of things at the very end here. Um, what could the US government do in the short term to try to make this a reality? Well, first of all, the US government should commit itself to dismantling the ITU and to do so publicly and to say it's going to be a long-term project. It won't happen overnight, but we need to wind it down. One small thing that should happen is the US uh, government could shift from having the State Department represent uh, the United States and the ITU and shift it to the FCC. We might start to think about the ITU as more like a forum for regulators uh, and regulatory agencies rather than a vehicle for diplomacy, particularly when the State Department has proven to be so slow and clumsy. They're very good people, by the way. I love and respect them. Their former colleagues, David Gross and Phil Verbeer and so forth, do yeoman's work. But as an institution, the State Department itself is too slow and clunky and non-technical to really be an effective uh, avatar for the United States in this forum. We should shift that and give primary lead uh, agency responsibility to the Federal Communications Commission, which is better suited to doing it. Second, we should start to squeeze the budget of the ITU much more aggressively. Uh, there should be ruthless budget scrutiny, transparency, and accountability. The ITU spends vast amounts of money on Lord knows what. Um, its bureaucracy is as, as bloated and uh, useless as they come. Why, by the way, should U.S. taxpayers be funding an organization that directly subverts U.S. national and global economic interests? That's often a standard question with U.N. agencies, but in this case, I think it's quite a pointed one. Um, we should uh, engage in a sustained push to spin out the ITU standardization activities, the ITUT. Uh, the ITUT should join the IETF, ETSI, IEEE, 3GPP, the Broadband Forum, and other standards organizations that live or die according to whether the work that they do is useful. If the work they do is useful, industry will support it. If it's not useful, industry will not and won't be adopted. And uh, uh, anchoring its standards activities in a treaty organizations where governments ultimately have decision-making power uh, makes no sense. Uh, finally, um, we should... Uh, uh, um, I, I think the, the United States Senate should be prepared uh, to reject any new treaty language coming out of the ITRs that fails to shrink, not just keep in place, but fails to shrink the scope and role of the ITU. Uh, even if the administration comes back with a not too terrible, could have been worse set of ITRs, uh, the Senate should s seriously consider rejecting them. Uh, uh, they should not accept any references to the internet and the ITRs, any references to cyber anything, any references to spam, et cetera, the things which are directly related to the internet as opposed to the telecommunications infrastructure that it rides on top of. And uh, uh, my final contention is if the U.S. and a number of countries reject new internet hostile ITRs, it could dramatically accelerate the neutering and dismantling of the ITU that I think should be the formal objective of the United States to pursue over the coming decades. Thank you very much.